Hello again friends, this is Karen with a C at Crafting with Karen. Today I'm going to kit up this, um, the official title is Abstract Blue Flower from freepainting.com. You may recall from my unboxing video that I posted um, recently that I was missing a couple of bags of drills from this kit. I had one of three bags of one of the colors. I did send an email to the company and they, I filled out their little form and presumably they are shipping me the other drills. But the reason I wanted to go ahead and start this one is that the next one I want to do is a square drill, full, full uh, field, and I really want it to be good. And this is, I've never done a square drill one before. So I decided to practice on this one because it was a little less expensive and if I can't get the line straight, you know, it won't be the end of the world. Um, but this way I can practice with those square drills, get them looking really good before I go on to the one that I really want to have come out really, really well. So I decided to go ahead and do that and I thought I might do some more get to know me questions while I was kidding that up so we can chat and you can see my process. Uh, basically what I do here is, oh, you know what, I need to grab my little bins here. So this has 30 colors, so I'm gonna need two of these boxes these ones. So they have uh, 28 in one and then I'll use one extra little strip for the last couple of uh, colors. And what I do is I made a copy of the inventory sheet. This is my copy. And I'm going to cut out this strip of symbols and tape. use double-sided tape. I put the tape on the back and tape those to the box and then I'll put the, excuse me, I'll put the drills into the boxes with the labels with the codes on the top. Um, sometimes I include either like the number or the DMC code when I do the cut out the label, but in this case it's a little bit too wide and really I don't really need it. The only thing I really need is the symbol because I'm going to look at the symbol on the canvas and look for that box with that symbol. So it's not like it's going to be, you know, so hard to find with 30 colors. So I might, let's see, is this too wide to have? I might just, I might go ahead and include like the symbol number and that way I can keep them in order in my box. So maybe I'll do that. So I'm going to do that. So there's a couple things uh, before I get started on that that I wanted to tell you about. Uh, so let me just set this aside for a second. Don't mind my little blue uh, piece of washi tape that shows me the center of my viewfinder area. So all these canvases that I got from uh, from New Frog and then there was the one from Hula Can, I did go ahead and iron them. I put parchment paper on them and ironed them and they all came out fine. Didn't have any trouble. Haven't never had a trouble except for this one on this giraffe one. When I ironed it, I don't know if I had the iron too hot. I don't know if I had cheapy parchment paper on it that I've now since replaced with good parchment paper. But the entire canvas, I don't know if you can see this, the entire canvas warped. Like, it's not just that it's wrinkled, it's, it's actually warped. Like, it can't be straightened because there'll be like a bend in it. I don't know if you can really see it. So, um, if anybody has any suggestions on if that's even fixable, let me know. I, I don't really know what to do about that and I don't really want to just give up on this canvas. Um, it was only $6 for this kit, so it's not like I couldn't just buy it again. But I kind of like it and I kind of don't really want to have to spend the money again. It's my own fault, you know, for ironing it. But on the other hand, I, I'd love to be able to correct this problem if possible. So if anyone has any suggestions, please leave them in the comments for me. And I'm going to post on a couple Facebook groups also asking if, if anybody has any suggestions. I'll try to take some good pictures of that. So I still get a kick out of the fact that this says deer when they're clearly grass. All right. So that's out of the way for now. Don't need that. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you was I have started using the pick-me-up pen. I like it a lot. Um, it's definitely way better than having to be constantly refilling my pen. And I feel I have to refill my pens a lot. Like I don't, some people say they can do, you know, three diamond paintings on one filling of red wax. I don't get that at all. Because I get to the point where I, it just doesn't pick up the drills anymore because the it's been, I don't know what I do to it. But anyway, but um in a couple different reviews, and I certainly noticed this myself, there's this gap where the two pieces come together, where there's where there's this um, 
threaded area. And that gap is exactly right where I hold it, right where my hands go, it was right on that gap. So what I did was I did a little surgery. I cut a piece of double-sided tape, a little strip of it, and I stuck it right in there where that, this is an extra piece of the thing, where that um, gap is. And then I took um, just a standard little um, grippy, pencil grippy, and I cut, sliced, sliced this slice, and I sliced it open, and then of course it was too, not long enough, so I had to cut a piece, another piece out of it. And I just taped that in there, into that little section, with that double-sided tape. It's just sticky enough that it stays in there. And that gives me a cushion right where my fingers go. So I thought that was some pretty handy little surgery that I did there, and I thought you might like to see that. Um, when I go to uh, push up the stuff, you know, at some point I'm going to have to maybe trim this a little bit so that I can keep pushing the, the goop up. But for right now, I've had to push it up so little that I, it's no problem. That's in there and it's still able to do it. So that was kind of cool. Glad that I thought of doing that and it worked out great. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and kit this up. So let's get our drills out. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's do the boxes first. We'll do the boxes first. And so we don't need this and we don't need this. We need these. All right, so I will explain what I'm doing and then I will also do some more get to know me questions. So uh, this, is, this is from a list of 317 random get to know me questions. Some of them I've sort of already answered. Some, many of them I'm gonna skip over and not answer because I don't want to. I'm just gonna pick the ones that are interesting to me and might be interesting to you, maybe, sorta, of, kinda. Of. Okay, so let's cut out um, the strip that we need first. And then I'll put this tape on it. So, um, first couple of questions have to do with your name. My full name is Karen Beth Peltier. I am named after my great grandmother, Clara. That's why it is Karen with a C. In Jewish tradition, you name your children after only relatives who have already passed away. So we generally don't have, you know, John the second, John the third, etc., with a living parent or a grandparent. So um, I never got to meet my great grandmother Clara. She was my father's mother's mother, and from what I understand, my dad was her favorite. She was not always the most easiest person to get along with, but she loved my dad. So I am named after her. My Hebrew name is Chaya, which was her Hebrew name, and I am carrying with a C after Clara. Let me see if this is too wide to fit on here. I may have to make it just a little bit narrower. Yeah, I'm just going to trim off a little tiny bit more. Okay, let's see. Um, I already talked about where I was from and where I grew up and all that. Let's see. What would your, this is an interesting question. What would your parents have named you if you were the opposite gender? I could be wrong. But I believe at one point, I, one of them told me that they would have named me Joshua. I'm not 100% sure about that, but somehow that sticks in my head that I think that's what it would have been. Okay, what's next? Um, what is your biggest accomplishment? I would say probably adopting our son, Jordan. It took two and a half years. Um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, literally just endless bureaucracy, endless problems, endless delays. And to this day, it's kind of stunning to me that we actually got him home. Uh, I will tell the entire adoption story some other day in a drill with me probably, but that I would definitely say that's probably my biggest accomplishment. Um, what is my biggest regret? I have many, many, many regrets in my life. I would say probably, I have certainly more than one. One of my biggest ones is not um, finding a real career, a real profession, you know, earlier in my life, not really taking advantage of, of college in a way that would prepare me for a career. I sort of flitted around from major to major. The major that I ultimately did graduate with wasn't, 
I graduated with a degree in psychology, but it wasn't really anything I ever was going to use. I was never going to be a psychologist. Um, the way that that happened was I was coming up to my last semester and I went to see my advisor to confirm that, you know, yes, I was all set to graduate and I had all the credits I needed and everything. And I had already prepared my schedule for that semester, but I don't think the semester had actually started yet. It was probably like a couple days before it actually started. And so I was like, you know, am I all set to graduate? Do I have what I need? And he looked at my schedule and he said, well, you know, if you just change this one class to this other one class, and I think maybe do one other thing, you could get a degree in psychology instead of, I was just going to get like general studies which was sort of a generic liberal arts degree just to get the damn piece of paper and get out of college and be done with it. Because I had taken all these psych classes throughout college just because they were sort of interesting at the time. And I said, okay. <laughs> and I found a professor who would sponsor me for um, like a independent study research paper that I wrote for her. And uh, that's how I ended up with that degree, but I never was going to do that. So I would definitely, and I, and I really never had any type of specific career, really my whole adult life. I, I really flitted from job to job and I had some that I liked more than others and I had some that were more professional than others, but I do regret not having taken advantage of college, come up with what I figured out what I really wanted to do that I really loved and really pursued it as a career for my whole, you know, or like a good portion of my adult life. What is your eye color? I have blue eyes and brown hair, although my hair is sort of more reddish. Um, this is asking about my favorite actor, my favorite actress. I don't, I'm not into, I mean, you know, yeah, I like certain people, but I don't, I don't have a favorite. I don't have a favorite singer. I don't have a favorite band. Um, you know, I have certain shows that I like. What, let's see. So what are my, some of my favorite TV shows? Current shows, uh, what do I watch? I don't know if I call them my favorites, but what do I watch? I watch Grey's Anatomy. I watch This Is Us. I watch um, NCIS. I only really watch hour-long dramas. I hate comedies. I hate sitcoms. I just, I can't watch them. Every joke that they think is so funny, I just find dumb. It's like insulting my intelligence. I, I apologize, and I, I, it's not that I look down on people who like those shows. It's all more power to you, but I just I just don't. They just don't they don't entertain me. I don't find them funny. So I only watch hour-long dramas. Um, let's see what else do I watch. Uh, I like um, I like a show called The Prophet, which is on um, forget what station it's on. You know, I have, I, everything's like on my DVR. I don't even know what channel things are on anymore. Um, which is a, it's, it's kind of like a shark, not a shark tank derivative, but it's, it's a, in a similar vein as shark tank. It's a, it's a gentleman, uh, well, very wealthy businessman who goes around and help, you know, invests in struggling companies and, and, uh, you know, helps them to sort of improve and, Sometimes they take his advice, sometimes they don't, sometimes they've lied to him, and sometimes it all goes great, and they take his advice. Um, I really like that show. Uh, I watch Hoarders I watch on A&E also. Uh, I'm a huge Live PD fan. I, I might actually say Live PD might be my favorite show right now. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with it, Live PD is on A&E. It's on every Friday and Saturday night from 9 to midnight Eastern Time. And it's sort of like cops, except it's actually live. They follow um, usually between six to eight different police departments around the country. Uh, usually, you know, a couple officers in each department on a given night. And they just, you know, kind of switch around from from town to town, depending on who's doing what, who's pulling somebody over, who's chasing a bad guy, who's uh, responding to whatever, you know, car accident or chase or whatever. It is amazing to me watching this show. First of all, everybody has weed. And everyone they pull over, sometimes it seems like, nobody actually has a license. It's either suspended or they don't have ID or whatever. And they all have outstanding warrants. Now, obviously, part of that is the fact that 
Um, yes, it's live, but it's on like a 20 minute delay because they have to be able to control what they show you. And so you know that they're choosing the stories to show you where the people don't have IDs and they have weed in the car and they all have warrants. But it's, it's just so funny that they all seem to have this situation. Um, but I really enjoy it. It's, it's, you know, some nights it's hilarious and fascinating and there's lots of interesting things going on and other nights it's three hours of watching some poor guy tramp around the woods with a canine in search of a suspect that they never actually find which I find incredibly boring and I usually fast forward through that so I don't watch it live live I usually delay it you know I don't start watching till like 9 30 so that I can fast forward through the commercials and fast forward through the really boring parts um other shows that I really like um I like all of the I like both America's Test Kitchen and Cook's Country uh which are both cooking shows on PBS I make I cook a, a fair amount I'm a good pretty good cook I would say I would like to think I am and I would say 90% of the recipes that I cook are from either America's Test Kitchen, Cook's Illustrated Magazine, or Cook's Country. I have a subscription to their website that gives me access to every single recipe on the site, including those from every cookbook they've ever published. And whenever I want to cook something, that is always the first place I go. I think it's fascinating the way they test everything and figure out the absolutely best way to make any given thing. A uh, perfect example is recently I made these sort of hostess cupcake knockoffs. It was like a dark chocolate devil's food cupcake with this white sort of marshmallowy filling and it even had the little white squiggly squirrel on the top um, that you piped on and they came out delicious and they were real pretty easy to make. I mean it took several steps but none of the steps were hard. So that's another favorite show. Um, some of my favorite shows in the past have been Probably my favorite show, really, mostly of all time, I guess. I guess if I had to pick one, would be Stargate SG-1. I really loved that show. It had, it, I'm a sci-fi sci fan, um, but it wasn't just sci-fi. It had humor, it had heart, it had great character interactions, great relationships between the main characters, um, good stories, pretty decent writing. Pretty good special effects. Just all around it was good. Uh, I actually initially started watching it. You know, I'd seen the original movie of Stargate. I thought it was fine. But the reason I originally started watching it, to be honest with you, I was always a big Richard Dean Anderson fan from his MacGyver days. And he was going to be starring in it. So I said, well, then I guess I have to get Showtime so I can watch it. <laughs> and it was on Showtime for the first some number of seasons, and then they switched over to Sci-Fi Channel for the rest of its run. And it was on for 10 years, and it had two spinoffs. Uh, one took place in uh, the city of Atlantis, which was actually uh, in another galaxy. It was a whole thing. It was a, you know, I could talk more about it. If anyone really cares, I'd be happy to tell you the story, but... That was a pretty good show also. And then there was a second spinoff also, which wasn't as popular, which was fine, but I don't know. It didn't excite me as much. Called Stargate Universe. Uh, okay, that's enough talk about TV for now. Let's see. Um, what's your favorite drink? What's your favorite food? I don't, I don't have, I don't have individual favorite things. I have things I like more than others. Foods, you know, I like comfort food. My, I would say my current favorite comfort, bad for you food, is caramel popcorn. Oh my god. Like, I'm, it's, it's so bad for you and so good. Um, I found a recipe online, this one is not from Cook's Illustrated, for a softer caramel popcorn as opposed to the kind of crunchy kind. Whoops, I dropped some. Uh, hold on, let me just grab these. And uh, I've made it several times. It's really addicting. It makes a ridiculously huge batch. I'm sorry, let me go back and say that again. Okay, I picked up those drills I dropped. Uh, I've made it several times, this caramel popcorn. It makes a ridiculously huge batch, and it's completely addicting and delicious. Okay, let's see where we are here. Um, what have I also been cooking lately? I, I make a mean meatloaf. Let me tell you, my kid, Jordan, 
he loves my meatloaf and it is a Cook's Illustrated recipe. It's an all beef meatloaf. It has a couple secret ingredients and he even requested it for his birthday dinner. So that's how good that meatloaf is. What else do I like? Oh, you know, anything with carbs, <laughs> pasta, bread, pizza, rice. I'm a bit, I've been known to eat a box of rice aroni as a meal, uh, especially when I used to come home late from work. That would be an easy, quick, uh, something I could throw together quickly. Um, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Okay, this one I do have a favorite. So, my favorite ice cream flavor is, hang on just one second, I need to get my list here. So I know what color to put in what bag, because the bags aren't numbered, the bags just have GMC codes. So, let me, I'm going to just quickly write down, because I, of course, sliced off the number. So let me, where's a pen here? Let me just quickly write here next to these so I have I'm just writing the number one two three four five um, so that I have these because I cut them off with the uh, box number the one two three as opposed to the DMC and so that's what's now taped onto the boxes and I don't have the actual number on the paper anymore so let me just do this real quick 21 22 and then I can make sure the right beads go in the right box. And then any that I have too many to fit in the one box, I know these are kind of small boxes, but I like them. I'll just put it in a Ziploc bag and just scribble the number on it for now. Okay, so favorite ice cream flavor. Yes, my favorite ice cream flavor is peppermint stick. And my favorite way to eat peppermint stick ice cream is as a hot fudge sundae. I, when I was in college, my freshman year, I had this friend who coincidentally was also named Karen. And in the dorm, she lived She lived in the dorm with me. I don't even remember how we met. I guess we must have had a class together or something. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm looking for 369 here. I know it's green. There we go. Um, I need a tray. So we lived in the dorm together. And the way our meal plan worked in our dorm was you got... Three meals a day, no, you got two meals a day, um, six days a week. And then on Sundays, you got one meal. And the, the dorm cafeteria was actually closed for dinner. So this is, I'm sorry, it's my first chance to actually look at these and kind of see how they look. Um, I guess they seem fine. I mean, I don't see like a lot of extra little pieces sticking off of them, so I guess that's good. All right. So on Sundays, you only really got one meal. So you basically were on your own for dinner. So we would almost always eat our Sunday night dinner together. We'd go out for pizza or whatever. And then there was this restaurant um, not far from the dorm that had the best peppermint stick ice cream. And we would get hot fudge Sundays with peppermint stick ice cream on Sunday nights together. And that was like our routine. And... Um, it was just like this nice thing that we would just do together. I really should have put these in order before I started this because I could be here all day just looking for the next bag. Here we go, 501. Okay. So that's my favorite ice cream flavor. Okay, what's next? Um, my favorite music genre. Well, I like pop, but not like rappy, hip hop -y pop. I like more like adult contemporary kind of pop. Um, you know, like, I don't even know what artists I can't even say. Um, but I really, I listen more to country or classical. I know two strange combinations, but, um, country, I like, you know, Carrie Underwood's good. Um, I really like Trisha Yearwood. My favorite country artist of the moment is a gentleman named Justin Moore who has a couple of songs I really like out right now. One's called Hell on a Highway, which is about a woman who's left him and is driving away. And another one called Somebody Else Will, which is about he he sees a girl in a bar that he wants to go up to and talk to, and he knows that if he doesn't make a move soon that somebody else is going to go talk to her first. Um, so, yeah, so... That's, and then I, I like, I do like classical music. My favorite classical composer is definitely Tchaikovsky. I like the passionate Russian stuff. Um, 
Opera's fine. I'm not a huge Opera fan, but I do like Carmen. I've always liked Carmen. And um, my father was a very, very big opera fan, so we, we sort of had Carmen in common. And, uh, and also a big classical music fan. Both my parents are classical music fans. And so I grew up having it, you know, listening to it and having it. I, I think I mentioned in a previous video that I went to Interlochen Music Camp and sang in the choir. And, you know, so that was, of course, primarily classical music that we did. Lots of requiems and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, Tchaikovsky, um, Tchaikovsky's Violin Concerto is probably my very favorite piece of classical music, uh, particularly Joshua Bell, who's my favorite violinist playing it. And, uh, I also like his Sixth Symphony, which is the Pathetique Symphony, which is very tragic and sort of sad and depressing, but, but kind of cool also. It's got a, it's got a couple of interesting movements in it too, so. All right, yep, yes, we're searching for the next color again. Uh, because I don't have them in order, and so I'm just trying to turn all the bags over so all the numbers are facing upright. Because, you know, maybe that would make it like a little bit easier. Oh, heavens, 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 heavens. 519, where are you, where are you? Oh, sorry, 518. Oh, it's a twofer. It's a twofer, so that'll help if I know I'm looking for a twofer. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, that's music. Um, don't have a favorite quote, don't have a favorite snack, don't, oh, favorite song. Oh, another country artist I like very much is Blake Shelton. And my favorite individual song of all time is absolutely Austin by Blake Shelton. I love it. I especially like the last verse. Uh, I cry every time I hear it, even though I've heard it a million times. Every single time that last verse comes on, I start crying. I, I tear up. I can't help it. So if you want, if, I just, I love that song. And I love that last verse when she finally realizes that she loved him all along. Okay. Good, it's good to know too. I can, I'll bet I can fit three bags in these little boxes. That's good to know, because that was two. All right, what's next? Um, favorite time of the day? Definitely the middle of the night, like three o'clock in the morning. I am absolutely a night person. Totally and completely a night person. I often stay up all night if I can get away with it, if I don't have to be anywhere the next day. 561. And it's green, I know that. Come on now. At least it has a green symbol. 560. All right, come on now. All right, we're going to find it. We're gonna find it. Maybe it's okay. Come on now. This is I know this is boring. While I look for this one, this is 562. We'll get that ready next. All right. Well, let's we'll skip ahead. We'll do 562, which is box seven. Okay. Uh, right, middle of the night. Um, yeah, I'm a night person, and I would rather just be up in the middle of the night where it's quiet, and I can be by myself. And I don't have to deal with anybody or anything. And, uh, yeah. So I often stay up all night diamond painting. And watching YouTube videos. Like I'm doing right now. It happens to be like 5 o'clock in the morning at the moment. And I've been up all night. I actually spent all night diamond painting one of my new, new, I finished Red Poppies and then I started this, um, giraffe that I, one of the other giraffe that I got from my new frog order. It's the sort of rainbow colorful one. And I ended up finishing it. I just stayed up all night and did it. Took a total of five hours exactly. Almost exactly. But it's done. And now I'm ready to do this square one. So that is definitely my favorite time of day. It's the middle of the night. 